didn't do it. Frog Bob, you're a frog and the goal is to eat as many flies as you can. It's the same thing as frogs and flies on the Atari 2600, but the graphics are way better. On Atari, the flies are just flickering dots. However, it's more fun to play because of its fluent control. It's a fine example of better graphics don't make a better game. Buzz Bombers, now this is funny. You kill a bunch of bees with bug spray, but no, you don't use a can of bug spray. You are the can of bug spray. There's also a hummingbird you can shoot at, but it doesn't seem to do anything. You know when bees sting you? Their asses break off and they die. Space Hawk. Man, everything begins with space. So you're just a guy floating around space shooting green slime. Uh-oh, uh -oh, the bubbles are coming. Gotta find the- Ah! Oh, mother of a fuck! It'd be so much easier to move if you could just use the disc. Instead, it's the damn keypad. Uh-oh, here comes the Space Hawk. Gotta move, gotta move! Damn! I wipe uh, my ass on this game. Boxing. Okay. Yeah, boxing. This sucks. Snafu. You have to keep the line going as long as possible without touching the other lines or hitting your own. It's the bare basics of graphics, but surprisingly, it's a pretty fun game. Okay, now we gotta move on, but let me introduce the IntelliVoice Voice Synthesis Module. What the fuck is that? Well, it makes your games talk. Yeah, now at the time, the idea of having voices in video games was a new thing. But unfortunately, only a few games were compatible, like B-17 Bombers. Mattel Electronics presents B-17 Bomber. B-17 Bomber. B-17 Bomber. Alright, fuck the game, let's try Bomb Squad. Mattel Electronics presents Bomb Squad. They'll never do it in time. The cold, the cold, figure out the cold. What? Guess I gotta defuse the bomb. It won't be easy. Replace this third, this oh. fourth, this second, this first. Oh shit, oh shit! Looks like teams are scared to the To the next challenge for the tiebreaker, cowpucks! Somebody better get me down now! Hello? Anyone? What's that? A metamorphic stone oh, rising from the blackness and negative earth? A towering Cowboy behemoth of monstrosity Cowboy brought down by extraterrestrial powers? Or a giant monolith of death hell-bent on the annihilation of humankind, time, and all matter? No, it's the AC adapter for a ColecoVision. <sighs> what the fuck were they thinking?! Is this necessary? Look, I can't fit this godforsaken piece of shit in the electrical outlet unless there's nothing next to it. What a fucking hog. That's what it is, a self-indulgent glutton of a power hog. Anyway... The ColecoVision was released in 1972, which was eight years before that other piece of shit. Like the Intellivision, it had the same stupid-ass keypad, but with a joystick. Well, almost a joystick, and it's so stiff it doesn't fare much better. First, let's try out Montezuma's Revenge. Well, I would make some comment about diarrhea or something, but it's actually a pretty good platforming game. You collect a bunch of treasures while avoiding all kinds of hazards. Standard stuff, you know, but well done. Only problem, this controller is fucking horrible! But the good news is that, unlike the Intellivision, you can unplug the controller and swap it with an Atari or a Sega Genesis controller. Who would have thought that would be compatible? But what a great thing. Now let's try Rocky. That's right, Rocky on the ColecoVision. The music and the graphics are quite good for the time, but would it be too much trouble to add any facial features? As far to my knowledge, your only opponent is Clubber Lang. After all, Rocky III was the newest movie so there's definitely no yeah, Ivan Drago. But all you do is mash buttons and it all boils down to a big crock of shit. Okay, you're not gonna believe this one. It's called Cabbage Patch Kids Adventure in the Park. It's basically like another pitfall game but with a random layout. Why would I swing on the vines when I can hop on the lily pad instead? Then there's screens which don't have anything on it. 
So what's the point of having them? And so many of them look the same. Next is Campaign 84. Yes, a game based on the presidential campaign. Probably the worst fucking concept for any game in history. First, you pick what you want to accomplish, you know, like what kind of serious issues there are in the country, like ban all shoelaces. And that's my favorite, because shoelaces are bullshit. Then you pick the donkey or the elephant, and I don't really know which is which. And then you're moving around, and I really seem to be having a lot of trouble with this because I can barely move. Alright, let's try to touch the megaphone, okay? You were seen putting your shoes on before you put on your pants. Okay, well who the hell was watching me get dressed? If I want to put my shoes on first, that's my own goddamn business. Next up is Chuck Norris. Yeah, that's right. Chuck Norris, the game. You're walking around, and then you get into fights, and the attacks are completely ineffective. Come on, you son of a bitch! Wow. This is shit. Next we have Dance Fantasy. Okay, well my first question is, where's the music? And what the hell am I trying to do? You're just like floating around. It's as much fun as dragging a mouse around the computer screen. Dr. Seuss's Fix Up the Mix Up Puzzler. It's a puzzle game where you put together different Dr. Seuss characters. Yeah, that's about as much as I can say about that. Learning with Leaper. It's one of the most juvenile games I've ever played. You're a weird eyeball with legs, and there's four little games to pick from. In the balloon game, all you gotta do is match the letters. See, that's a T up there, so all I do is I just grab the T, and then I match them up, and there you go, you win! It's pretty hard, right? In the maze game, you're a frog being chased by a centipede. All you gotta do is get to the end of the maze, and that's it. The dog game, I have no fucking clue what to do. But the paint game is basically like an old Your paint program. Money. You thought Mario Paint was primitive? Well, look again. Next is looping. Here we go. Oh, uh, let's try again. Oh, man, that pilot's drunk as shit. Oh, I gotta get through the wall. Here we go. Okay. Maybe I gotta go over it. Oh, I guess not. Uh-oh, let's try again. Oh, man, what am I supposed to do? Fuck! Oh, I know. I gotta shoot through it. Knees or anything in the chest region. Robin Hood. I guess you're Robin Hood and you're just shooting the fuck out of people with your arrows. Man, all this violence going on, but the sun is just smiling away. Slurpy. Okay, you're just going around slurping balls, and there's all kinds of weird creatures coming at you. I really don't know how else to describe this thing. It's like, what the hell? What? Smurf Rescue. Yeah, how could you go wrong with a game about the Smurfs? All you do is keep walking right. Nobody's trying to kill you. Everything's just fine and dandy. What a nice game. This is the happiest game ever made. War Games. I'm assuming it's based off the movie, since they both came out in 1983. You're basically trying to stop nuclear missiles from blowing up the whole world. It's kind of serious. But there's another one called War Room, which is a similar game, except this one has some comedic relief, because it's got giant mutant chickens. Alright, well, this video is getting out of hand, and we can spend all day talking about these games, discussing them in depth, but I only wanted to give you an introduction to two classic gaming consoles. Now, I know we mainly focused on the shitty aspects, but let me tell you.